Welcome to the All Things Performance Podcast, where our goal is to stay hungry, to get better, and to move the meter. My name is Josiah Igano, and whether you're looking to improve physically, to get fed spiritually, or to challenge yourself mentally, we're digging deep to find those gems, and we're going to find them. Let's go. Come on, man. <laughs> man, this is awesome, man. So today I'm joined with a good friend of mine, Mario D'Ortenzio. Uh, I, I actually met Mario, I think I was about 18, 19 years old uh, at Arizona State University. Go Devils, baby. Um, right on. I was doing uh, um, ministry uh, with Mario uh, through FCA and Mario, man, since then you've been doing a lot of big time things. Um, you've got a beautiful family uh, and you're doing very honorable work, man. And so first of all, welcome, man. Welcome. Thank you, Josiah. It's, it's an honor and a privilege to be here, dude. I love you immensely. Thank you, brother. And the feeling is mutual, man. I, I would love for us to, before we get going, um, you know, mental health is something that has uh, come on the scene, uh, you know, really strong these last few years. And oftentimes, um, uh, you know, mental health has a negative stigma. Um, it's also mm -hmm. often, you know, associated with depression, anxiety, you know, just, you know, no one says, oh, yeah, let's talk about mental health and your vitality and your, your, your vigor and your, you know, hope. And, you know, it's often uh, categorized as something negative. I would love for uh, you to uh, talk about mental health, what you're doing, and why this area is so important. Mm. Dude, where do I start? Um, I mean, you see it person to person every single day with what you do. And I see it from probably a little bigger perspective because we're a global organization and we're, we're online. Um, but mental health, I mean, that's, that's the core to everything. I mean, if your head ain't right and your heart ain't right, you're in a lot of trouble. You're screwed. Mm -hmm. And, and it, the, the fruit of that is going to affect a lot of people. It's going to affect you physically and it will affect the people that you love physically. So it is critically, critically, critically important mm -hmm. that not necessarily, not necessarily saying that you have to have everything together because you don't, but understanding that you don't have everything together. Mm -hmm. um, understanding that, you know, I'm a weak dude that needs help every now and then. Yeah. Understanding that, you know, feelings are not facts. Hmm. Understanding that I might have an off day, but I might wake up tomorrow and it might be a, a totally different day. Mm -hmm. So I can't trust my feelings. Yeah. Um, on a spiritual note, and, and I'm not, our organization, our organization is called Death to Life. Mm -hmm. Death uh, death, the number two life. Um, we, we, we reach people that aren't church at all. Mm -hmm. And the way that I, the way that Carrie and I, um, when we launched death to life in 2009, I was in a horrible, horrible, dark place. And you've known me for a very long time. And I was working with the fellowship of Christian athletes. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you looking nice on the outside, but on the inside, you know, I had a lot of questions, but when my, uh, um, our youngest daughter, we have four daughters. When my youngest daughter Reese was born, she has, uh, some pretty gnarly disabilities. She was born with, um, a very rare syndrome mm -hmm. and I was, uh, in a horrible, horrible place during that time around 2007. Mm -hmm. I was in a really dark place, just wondering man, is this all life is, is, you know, I'm going to have to hold my, you know, daughter for the rest of her life. She can't walk. She can't talk. She's not going to be able to do what mm -hmm. my other three girls can do. And it was a really woe is me time. Uh, but I was in a very, very dark, dark place mentally. My mental health was, my heart was messed up mm -hmm. and I was questioning everything, bro. I was questioning everything. But, um, but through that, God revealed himself in, in, in an awesome way. And I'm not talking religion. I'm talking about when you're rock bottom, when you're thinking about either ending your life or, you know, God, you got to reveal yourself to me. You yeah. know, and the love that I had for Carrie and my girls wasn't enough at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, I was in so much pain. Um, but through that, God revealed himself to me in a huge way that I created Reese for a reason. 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing some awesome, amazing things to this young lady that can't walk, that can't talk, mm -hmm. that deals with seizures on a daily basis. Um, and you need to trust me. Mm -hmm. And through that, we launched Death to Life. And I have a heart for those individuals that are struggling. Right. I have a heart for those individuals, specifically the age range of about seven to 25 years old mm -hmm. um, that are really, weird. I mean, and we, we deal with, we counsel 24 seven. Mm -hmm. uh, and we counsel in over a hundred countries, but we, we deal with, you know, as young as seven years old to, you know, 85 year old, great, great grandparents that are lonely, lost and struggling. Wow. So we launched death to life in 2009. And unfortunately our organization isn't going to be going out of business anytime soon. And we're growing like crazy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I share all the time. I wish that uh, I look forward to the day, honestly, where death to life isn't needed anymore. Mm -hmm. That everybody, you know, it's a tool, it's a resource that's not needed because everybody's doing okay. And, uh, um, but unfortunately that's not the reality. But, so that was kind of the fire hose yeah. um, to you. But that's, that's, I mean, we're all about mental health. We're all about, you know, the, the head connecting to the heart. Mm -hmm. You know, that 15 inch, that 15 inch divide. You know, I yep. mean, it's if, if your head's not right, your heart's not right. And your heart's not right, your head's not right. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, man. Wow, that's powerful. That's a, there's, a, there's a lot that you just said right there that can branch off into, you know, separate breakout sessions and, and you know, podcasts, man, like, like hours. Right, uh, right, right. You said, you said, you said something that's powerful. You said that you're dealing with kids anywhere from youth to, you know, the elderly. And you said that you were... Uh, operating in over a hundred countries. And one of the things that I love looking at is I love looking at patterns. What yeah. pattern would you say that you guys consistently see with all of these individuals, man, woman, child that you work with? Hopelessness or just lacking hope. I mean, cause it ranges. I mean, I, you can be, you can have, uh, you can be hopeless but not suicidal. You know, you can be hopeless and not wanting to hurt yourself. Um, and you can be hopeless and you uh, could want to, to, to die. Um, so I would say across the board, it's hope. Um, and especially today mm -hmm. with the world that we're living in with, with the virus and everything and COVID-19, it's um, our numbers have increased three times wow. uh, in the last month. I mean, it's just been absolutely crazy. Wow. Um, so I would say oh, across the board, if I were to give one word, it's about hope. Hope. Wow. Wow. That's, that's, uh, that, that, is really, uh, that is really good insight. Um, of those individuals, to piggyback on, on hopelessness, right, of those individuals that have recovered, I want to, I wanna, you know, fast forward and I want to come back. Of those individuals who have recovered, right, what would you say, and, and they're doing well, all the testimonials that you, you get and, 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 and things of that nature, of those individuals who have recovered, what is the one thing, again, I know this is hard, but what is the one right. thing you have seen has been consistent as far as like these, these, this large group of people, I always saw this in their recovery? Mm, that they're loved, they have purpose, and there's hope. Uh, I, I mean, I mean it, dude, it's basically, I mean, that's, when I, if I were to tell you, Josiah, bro, you were created for a purpose. Mm -hmm. You might not know what that is, but you were created for a purpose. And I mean, it can take, it takes, it can take years to get to a point where, you know, somebody understands, okay, my life sucks and it might suck for the rest of my life. You know, people on the outside might look at me from the world and go, you know what, that, that's not the ideal situation. Mm -hmm. um, and it might suck for the rest of your life, but there's purpose in that. Mm -hmm. And what revealed that to me, bro, was the birth of my daughter, Reese. Yeah. But she's never going to, she's never going to walk. She's never going to talk. She's never going to be able to get married. She's never going to be able to play golf like her sister. She's not going to be able to do the things that we do. But this young lady has purpose. Mm -hmm. And if this young lady has purpose, mm -hmm. all of us have purpose. Yes. I have purpose. You have purpose. Your beautiful family has purpose. 
but it's the layer. It's an onion. It, it takes it some time mm -hmm. to get to that point where you understand. Okay, and, and it has nothing to do with religion. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with the biblical stuff. It has every, everything to do with why you're here, and you're, you're at our website. You're talking to one of our counselors because obviously somebody loves you. Mm -hmm. You know, we love you. We care. And, dude, I'll tell you, the majority of the time when somebody reaches out to us, I mean, we'll have people that reach out to us, mm -hmm. you know, 12, 13, 14 years old, and they're going to kill themselves that night. And this was it. They just Googled and found our website. And the fact that there's somebody there to talk to, to chat with, um, can be enough wow. for them to be like, wow, somebody does actually care for me. So I say across the board, it's people understanding that they're loved and they have purpose. Wow. That's and it doesn't, dude, it's not, it's not always rainbows and cuddly. I mean, it's not, you know, not everybody. I mean, we have a big chunk of people that reach out to us that actually do take their lives and it doesn't end up good. But um, there is a huge chunk, I would say across the board that that's usually, um, you know, what uh, the fruit is of yeah. when they do get better. So I want you to, this, this is very, uh, this is very powerful stuff. Um, there's a long walk, right? There's a lot of thought that goes into an individual's mind before they connect with you, before they connect with one of your counselors. They're thinking about this stuff. There's hopelessness. They have their cell phone right in front of them. And a lot has to happen before they hit that number to talk. They're, 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 at that moment, they're, they're, as, as soon as they hit talk, send, they, they're vulnerable. They open yeah. themselves up. Like this is the, the lowest of the low, probably embarrassing, probably uh, confused, frightened. What is, the, what is the, the, the most important thing that you tell your counselors uh, that they need to, 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 to attack first when that line mm. connects? Why, why are we at this point? Why are we, what's going on in your life that you would want to hurt yourself, that you'd want to end your life? And almost all the time when they reach out to us, it's kind of like, okay, like I said, the next step is death. So they're transparent. You know, they're an open book. Mm -hmm. You know, my girlfriend broke up with me. I'm alone. I mean, it, dude, and it ranges from you and I can look at it and go, oh, those are the smallest things. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's, it's, you know, I mean, it ranges from my boyfriend broke up with me. I'm being bullied at school. My wife doesn't talk to me. You know, I lost my job. Um, but I mean, it's, it's, they are an open book. I mean, it's like they're regurgitating everything. Mm -hmm. in their own life. I mean, we average that first initial, I mean, we have about, about 270 counselors and we're always needing to get more counselors, but, um, across the board, I mean, it is, it is, okay, what's the issue? What's the problem? Why do you, why you feel this way? And they're, they're open to sharing and we just slowly, you know, we don't, we don't say, Hey, you need this, that, and the other thing to get you better we're more of a listening, we're a sponge. And we take that stuff in. And, uh, um, but yeah, I mean, it's gonna be heavy, heavy, heavy stuff. Uh, very interesting, very interesting. I, um, I, I, so I have another one for you. So, so I'm in the, I'm in the perform, on the performance side of things. And right. so, you know, when dealing with athletes, there's this, uh, this misnomer, right? You know, that everybody's big, bad, tough, and bulletproof, right? Mm. And one of them, and I want you to talk about not only this, but others that if they come to your mind, um, one of the misnomers, right, is that, you know, um, you know, we don't talk about suicide or we don't talk about uh, uh, helplessness uh, because if we do, we're going to plant those, uh, those seeds in their mind and then they're going to start thinking about it. And what I learned was that somebody who is suicidal, somebody who is helpless, they actually want you to ask. They actually want to talk about this. I want you to talk about some of these misnomers that, that hover around suicidal ideation and helplessness for, for, for performance people. Um, 
I'm glad you're asking that because we just partnered with an organization and they're breaking down the why in the athletic community so many people are killing themselves uh, within, you know, elementary, high school, and college. And I'll break it down like this. Okay, my daughter, my oldest daughter, Faith, she's a junior. She's just finishing up her junior year at University of Montana playing golf. Mm -hmm. And the pressure that she and other athletes have to deal with on a daily basis, I mean, did you know better than anyone? I mean, it's, it's all about performance. And, I mean, that's the bottom line. If you're not performing, you're not getting approval. Mm -hmm. uh, you're there. The university's paying you, you know, $100,000, you know, over $100,000 for the next four years to play a game to perform. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't care. They, I mean, they really don't care, you know, how nice you are. I mean, in the bigger picture they do. But, you know, they, they want bottom line. You know, your golf score has to be a 70, has to be under par. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, so that, that, <laughs> I mean, it's this whole attitude of, you know, these athletes have it all together and they, they, th that is such a lie because Faith at University of Montana, she hands out all of our literature and uh, our stuff to the athletic department. We've had, since she's been there, um, we've had close to 10 athletes that have reached out to us. Wow. And that across the board, you know, track and field, football, I mean, you name it, golf. Um, and they've all struggled. I can't say anything to anybody. I can't tell my coach because my coach, you know, I might get kicked off the team. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, they'll think less of me. You know, if my teammates find out, you know, they'll think less of me. They'll think I'm weak. Yep. They don't think I'm strong enough. Um, so it's a safe place for them to come to our website and talk to our counselors because, you know, they know that we're not going to share their information. We're not going to get them in trouble, mm -hmm. um, that we're a safe place for them. But dude, the whole athletic side and it's life in general, even those that aren't, I mean, those of us that have a job, you know, it's about performance. If we don't do well in our job, we don't have a job. Yeah. Um, so it's that pressure that we put on ourselves that for some people it can push them over the limit. Yeah. Um, but the athletic side, homeboy, this is a whole other podcast and we can talk yeah. about this in the future, but I mean, it is a serious, serious issue yeah. on the athletic side. I mean, here, here, I mean, you have individuals, you have a girl that, you know, didn't qualify for a tournament or missed a putt that hurt her team. And she's thinking about killing herself. Yeah. I mean, it's like, now, why, why are you at this point? Mm -hmm. uh, so dude, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a whole other podcast, but you know, it's that performance stuff. It's that smoke and mirrors. Mm -hmm. um, I got to look good. I got to perform yes. um, for my approval. That's my identity. Yeah, no, that's who you, you preach right now, brother. So um, very, very ardent. That's very ardent and inside. I mean, I want you to talk about, I want, I want us to stay here for just a second. Uh, I want you to talk, I mean, you have, uh, you have a, a beautiful family and you have four daughters, right, who are growing up in an mm. age where social media is king, right? I want you to talk about the conflation of mental health and social media. And I know this is going to be another podcast too, but right. talk, to us, talk to us about that. Brother, man, I mean, we, we as a team, we've kind of broken down why, when I was in high school, I graduated many, many moons ago. You graduated, <laughs> you graduated in the 90s. So you're a yeah. 90s high school. Yeah. Graduated, I graduated in 91. So, yeah. um, but we had, we had somebody that committed suicide in our community in Phoenix. Wow. And it was like, like, what the heck? You know, I mean, that, that, that individual must have had some serious issues and problems. And, you know, I mean, it was like such a rare, rare thing. Mm -hmm. um, but now, I mean, our team has broken it down. I mean, what is, why are there so many suicides? Why is there so much depression and anxiety? And I mean, it's not rocket science. I mean, what was introduced? I mean, you think about, you break it down even more, school shootings. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, this all started happening 
when we had computers in our hands and we could we could do things live and we could it's instantaneous mm -hmm. you know we can post on people's podcasts you know how much we hate them and you mm -hmm. know i mean just like i mean it's like instantaneous um news and information but brother man i deal with it with my girls and you having some youngins i mean you're gonna you're, you're gonna be there and there have to be there has to be a foundation in these kids mm -hmm. as they're growing up that this is all a lie yeah i mean it really is mm -hmm. i mean this isn't reality i mean dude i mean we have people that that reach out to us that that have uh, family members that have had kids that have committed suicide and we'll go to their social media pages mm -hmm. and it's all like glamour shots you know it's all pretty and and i mean you would never know yeah. that those individuals are hurting but i mean uh, the social media and our the technology today that's a huge huge um i would say probably in the top three reasons why we have such an epidemic Wow. of anxiety, depression, and ultimately suicide. Yeah, I, I just, um, I'd, I'd be interested to hear, uh, you know, and I don't want to open up a can because this is, again, these are, there's so many topics. It's, it's interesting when you talk about mental health and, and this overarching, you know, topic of mental health, there's so many topics that you've hit on today that are, mm. are courses. Universities are teaching courses on this stuff. Right, um, right. Uh, for 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 you, I, I wanna I wanna break it down uh, to a practical everyday level. What are some warning signs um, mm -hmm. that you should look out for if you know you are suspecting an individual, a family member, a friend, a teammate, a coworker um, is having suicidal ideation? Um, mm -hmm. And I, I know everybody's you know uh, different, but what are some things that you, should, you think we should keep in mind as the listeners, brother? Almost always, when somebody ends their life, people can look back and go, I missed that. I missed that. You know, oh, that, oh, I remember, you know, when she said that. I didn't pay attention. You know, I should have paid attention. We live in a world, dude, there, there was a point where, you know, I, my, our home office, the Death Life office, uh, we have a guest home and we do it out of our home because, of our situation with our daughter Reese, so I'm more available. But I mean, my daughters are, you know, 10 feet away and they're texting me, you know, hey, dad, uh, what? I'm like, you can't come over here yeah. and talk to me face to face. But that's the culture that we live in today. I mm -hmm. mean, it's this is a unique thing to be talking. I mean, Josiah, I haven't talked to you in years. Yeah, it's been a minute. I mean, but texting, texting and everything is there. But to, to actually see your beautiful mug, you know, that's a, that's a very, very unique thing. Yeah. And we're not doing that anymore. We yeah. have to be paying attention to the people in our lives that we care for, that we love. Yeah. And there are signs of the yin yang yeah. that we're not paying attention to. You send a if that individual like simple things like you send a text message to somebody, and they're usually good at getting back to you. Yeah, and they don't get back to you for a certain period of time. I mean that that doesn't necessarily mean that yeah. they want to kill themselves, but just like little things mm -hmm. like that. If that individual continually talks about negative stuff, is always talking about you know, oh my gosh, my life sucks. Oh my gosh. So just always, always in that dark, dark place. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, just, just, but we have to be paying attention. It's more than, you know, texting. I mean, texting is a good foot in the door, but it would be like, like hey, Joe, um, man, I'm noticing some things on, on social media. I'm no noticing some things that you're posting. I'm noticing some things that, other people in your life that Aaron is saying, mm -hmm. you know, she's, she sent me some text messages saying, Hey, be praying for Josiah. He's in, you know, th this doesn't happen. That's a hypothetical. Yeah. Right. But you know, he's, he's, he's in, you know, he's been down a lot lately. He's struggling mm -hmm. with this, that, or the other. It is my job as somebody that loves you to be proactive in that. Yeah. And you said, you said it before. If somebody is suicidal, if somebody's wanting to end their life, 
ask them if you think that they're at that place yeah ask them mm -hmm. hey are are you thinking about killing yourself yeah you know because what that does is it opens up like wow they actually do care and now i don't have nothing to hide i can share you know with mario with joe you know what's going on in my life so we just have to do a better job just being proactive in people's lives and paying attention because mm -hmm. the signs are out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, little things like I have an interest in buying guns now. I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm loving some of the music that I'm listening to is getting more dark. Yeah. You know, I'm usually a happy person and I'm distancing myself yeah. from people. Um, I sleep a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm in my room a lot. You know, I mean, just like little things like that, but we, I mean, the bottom line is we have to be paying attention. If we're not paying attention, then we're going to be heartbroken and uh, hurt that that individual ended their life when there were signs that we didn't pay attention to. Yeah, no, that's big, that's, that's big time. I think you, you just hit on a lot of different things as far as like the physical tells, like with the withdrawal, um, you know, even music choices, what they're posting, what they're listening to, mm. um, just being observant. Um, no. And that, that's really good, man. Um, what, like, what advice, right? I, I, want, I want you to, to just, uh, this is going to be an abstract question. Um, uh, let's talk about, let's talk about, um, you know, how about this? We'll do it like this. When you look at, when you look at the, the, the landscape of media, right? Movies, um, you know, music. Um, all forms of, of, of entertainment um, for somebody that has uh, kids, right? Um, what would you say that parents are responsible for um, in, in terms of, in terms of like, you know, um, uh, ex explaining, you know what I'm saying? Different things when it comes to self-worth, when it comes to, like you said earlier, this is reality. Uh, this is, you know, this is, you know, uh, um, this is true. This is not true because I've seen it even on commercials where I'm just like, yo, man, we're living in time and day where I got to explain commercials now, dude. I got to explain what's going on on commercials. You know, uh, how active can parents be and what advice should you give them in terms of the media that, you, that kids are consuming um, when they're there and when they're not there with their parents? Like, yeah, I just, it's a hard I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I'm having a hard time putting it in words, but I just feel like the interpretation of media is is right. huge. What advice would you share? You know, I would say um, at a young age. I mean, my 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 daughters grew up in a time where it wasn't as as prominent as it is today. I mean, the early two thousands. Um, but your kids are growing up in the thick of it. Yeah. And there, there has to be, when they're young, it is our responsibility as dads, especially with our young girls and with your stud guy. I mean, it's our responsibility to protect them. Yeah. It's our responsibility, you know, and, and it's our responsibility to lay down, you know, kind of the rules and the guidelines and stuff. I mean, they were, Carrie and I were very proactive at a young age saying, you know, you don't have your phones down the hallway. You can't have your phones in the room alone, you know? And it was a very, very difficult thing at first, but the girls at a young age got used to it. Yeah. It's just, okay, I don't take my phone alone in my room. Um, you know, there are certain things that, that they shouldn't be looking at, you know, this whole TikTok thing. Mm -hmm. um, and dude, I'm not one of those parents that, you know, are hyper- spiritual and and you can't watch this you can't read this you can't you know um but but my what carrie and i have inst tried to instill in our girls is the foundation of the majority of this is all a lie mm -hmm. i mean it really is and if you understand that and you don't get your worth from the likes on your social media from the friends on social media i mean you have 1500 followers on instagram probably 20 of those actually know you mm -hmm. you know these people don't know who you are do they actually really truly care who you are so it's like like with the whole thing about somebody in your life being depressed and possibly suicidal it's being proactive 
do not, the biggest mistake we can, as parents, we can do is just kind of let it go. And mm -hmm. it is what it is. Um, because pornography is, uh, I mean, is accessible, you know, more than ever on our phones. I mean, it's, it's, and for our girls and boys, I mean, for our, our girls too, not only our boys. Mm -hmm. I mean, the girls are, dude, when I was a kid, the only time I ever saw pornography was when my, I went over to my uncle's house and he had a Playboy on the toilet. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was like, when are we going over to uncle's again? You know, I, 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 I mean, that, was that magazine, what was that magazine? Yeah. That was the only way I accessed pornography. Mm -hmm. But it's rampant today. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, we're not going to protect our kids from everything, but if they have that solid, solid foundation mm -hmm. that my mom and my dad, my dad specifically is a safe place, the girls are going to have a, a little bit of a different relationship, you know, with Aaron. But, but that relationship with dad, yeah, that's the, that's their safe place. And they need to be able to feel like, you know, I can go talk, I can go talk. is that you or me? Yeah, is no, you, we're, we're good. Um, we're I can, I can go talk. I can go talk to dad and he's not going to shame me. He's not going to, you know, cause we got to remember what we were like when we were kids. Absolutely. It, you know, I mean, it's a process. Mm -hmm. It's a process, but we have to be very, very intentional and you're going to know, okay. You know, should my 10 year old have a, you know, a profile on Instagram? Probably, you know? <laughs> Probably not. Yeah, probably not. You know, I mean, but those are things that, you know, if we're not, if we don't hold that stuff in check, yeah, uh, the fruit can be sometimes deadly. Yeah, that's what. I mean, the the theme that I keep hearing from you uh, today, man, is just like we got to get into it. We got to get into the fight. Like we got to get into the fight, get dirty. We got to be observant. We got to call it out for what it is. Hey, what is this? What's going on here? Like you're you can't win, man, in the stance. Like this this stuff that we're talking about with mental health and just you know, uh, um, caring for our loved ones, caring for ourselves, like, like you can't win this thing, man, in the stands. Oh, dude, it's game time. It's game time. And the, the fruit of us not getting in the game, it's death and life. Yeah. I mean, it really is. I mean, one of the most heartbreaking things to deal with is when you get a phone call of somebody that you know, a friend of yours that killed themselves and you saw the signs and you didn't do anything about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, or a family member. I, we have family members all the time, parents all, all the time that reach out to us. You know, I, I, there were so many signs, so many things I could have done differently. Now yeah. on the bottom, the bottom line is when the individual takes their life, it's their choices. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, 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 it's nobody's fault, but I mean, we're human and those are, <laughs> things that we're going to have to deal with for the rest of our lives. Like, I wonder what if, Yeah, yeah. you know, so just Man. be proactive, be yeah. involved individual parent wise. And as a friend, that's cool. Man. I, I, um, I just really appreciate your insight. This is a really practical way of looking at things. Uh, it's very straight up and I, and I, and, I, and it's very authentic. I'm going to put you on the hot seat, man. Um, before I, I you know, you right on before you close us out with some practical ways uh, to just be mentally healthy and then whatever you want to share. Um, fill, in the, fill in the blank here, man. Fill in the blank. It would be a shame if what? Wow. It would be a shame. The people, that the people in our lives that love us and care about us the most didn't believe that we loved them and cared about them. You know what I mean? That there was some, that there was some doubt mm -hmm. in their heads that did Mario really love me? Did Mario really care about me? Um, that would break my heart. Wow. You know, it, 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 that would, yeah. Yeah, that would be a shame. That's powerful. So we got to be intentional about showing people and telling people that we love them. I mean, more than ever, more than ever, dude. I mean, we have, you'd be blown away how many uh, church folk reach out to us. Yeah. You know, Christians, religious people yeah. that reach out to us. Um, yeah. 
That's powerful, man. Um, that's a good reminder. It's a good reminder, man. And that's uh, speaking to me right now. Uh, next mm-hmm. question for you here. The best thing, and again, fill in the blank, the best thing that I can arm myself with, protect myself with is what? Mm. Well, I mean, the first thing that pops in my head is Jesus. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's savior and he's Lord. I can't say Carrie, my wife, I can't say my girls Mm -hmm. because they're human and messed up just like me, Mm -hmm. you know? So they're going to disappoint me, you know? And, and again, guys, this has nothing. I can't stand religion. I absolutely hate religion, but guess who also did Jesus. Yeah. You know, he wasn't critical with the sinners. He, He was critical with the religious leaders. Yeah. I mean, think about that. You really want to break it down. He was, he was, you know, he called them whitewashed tombs. Yeah. Man, you look awfully pretty on the inside, on the outside, but you're dead on the inside. Yeah. So, I mean, just the last 13 years or so, I mean, that's my bottom line is yeah. the thing that, that saved me. And this is the thing that, you know, I need the most is that savior and it's Jesus. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. The biggest lie in the world is what? <laughs> that God doesn't love you. Mm-hmm. That God's not real. That you know, that there's an en- there there isn't such thing as an enemy out there. Um, dude, you know as well as I do. And not every thought in your head is yours. Right. You know, and you got to wonder where are those thoughts coming from. Mm-hmm. I've heard uh, some of your podcasts and absolutely awesome. I love hearing the interviews with the professional athletes and they're talking about, you know, the constant, you know, the beat down. Yeah. You know, I'm not good enough. It's all mental. Where am I getting these thoughts? Where, where do these thoughts come from? Yeah. If we can understand where those thoughts are coming from, mm-hmm. you know, that they're not coming from you and they're, they're not coming from God. So who are they coming, you know, coming from? Yeah. So it's a, a good way to put it, man. It's a good way to put it. What, are there some, are there, I appreciate you, man. You're off the hot seat now, man. Um, okay. What, what are some, what are, as we get ready to close, what are some practical ways uh, that um, you would encourage us to, uh, to uh, engage in, in terms of being mentally healthy? Mm. Um, us personally and, and the people in our lives. I mean, just us personally. Yes. Just, uh, us. just, just being very proactive, you know, being very intentional. Uh, I know me personally, and that's, that's, that's all I can speak from is when I go through those tough times and those dark days of, you know, not, I'm not suicidal, but there are days where, you know, I'm lacking hope. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I get away alone and I pray Mm -hmm. and I get awesome podcasts that encourage me, Mm -hmm. you know, I just fill this sponge with things that are going to, you know, with truth. Mm-hmm. Not feelings. Oh, I feel this way. This must be how my life is. Mm-hmm. You know, this, and, and I don't listen to those, those feelings because they're lies, mm-hmm. you know, and they, they, they're fleeting. Yeah. Um, but I get away. I go hiking a lot alone. Carrie has her alone time where, you know, she just goes and she's away with the Lord and just, you know, she's in that safe place and yeah. that's my safe place. Um, but it has to happen every morning. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, Carrie will be like, Hey, you didn't go hiking this morning. Did you? And I'll be like, Oh, why? And she goes, I can tell, you know, cause I'm, I'm anxious. I'm like, you know, wired and you know, I'm, I'm talking, you know, negatively and, and, but every morning I got to get in that right. Okay, Lord, I need you today. I have to have you today. I'll, I'll never forget. And, and I'll, I'll stop with this. At a position coach at Arizona State, Coach Dick Arbuckle. You remember that guy? Yeah. Oh, shoot chicken, baby. Shoot chicken. <laughs> shoot chicken. Um, but he shared something. He shared something with me. He, uh, he was a, a believing man. And he shared something with me. He said, Mario, when, when did you become a Christian? And I told him the whole story in 1982. And I burped a prayer when a, a professional football player shared his testimony. He's like, okay. He goes, Every day since then, you've needed a savior. Every day, we need a savior. Every day, I need a savior. Period. I can't do this on my own, not under Mario's power, but, you know, Jesus. 
And that's the bottom line for me. Awesome, man. Awesome, man. Mario, man, thank you so much, man, for sharing. Uh, that was mm. awesome. I learned, I learned a lot and I feel like my wheels are turning and it's challenging me, you know, um, to do things uh, better uh, and to do things right. like, and to do things differently. So, man, thank you so much, man, for, for taking the time, brother. Hey, dude, I appreciate you. I love you. You know how much I love you. But share all of our resources with your, your listeners. Our website, death, the number two life.com. Yes. And I mean, we, we text chat mm-hmm. anonymously. So you can text D2L, D the number 2L at mm-hmm. 494949. And our counselors are there 24 7. So use us as a resource if you need help, if you need encouragement. Mm-hmm. We're there for you. But I love you, bro. Love big time.